Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is my week 15 wrap up. Pretty sure. To start off a little bit differently today, I have a mini book haul because I acquired three new books this week. I'm going to show them first because I'm going to briefly talk about two of them. So if you watched my personal canon video, you have got to see my parents and they made the comment that my sister and I were always wanting to go to the bookstore. And it was my birthday earlier this week. And so just to be silly, I went up to my dad last Saturday and said, I want to go to the bookstore in the same inflection that he uses in the video. And they said, okay, let's go. Now I'm an adult. I didn't expect them to buy them to buy my books, but they very generously did. The first book I bought was ADHD 2.0. My stepson has ADHD and my husband and I are working towards adoption. Pretty good chance that we're going to have children with ADHD. So I thought it was best that I get a better education. My stepson didn't, he only lived with us for a brief time when he was a teenager and I never really felt like I understood fully what he was going through in order to be a good advocate for him. And I want to do better. I've only read the first two chapters, but already I'm learning way more than I even knew before. And I even had a college roommate with AD. Well, at the time it was eight called ADD. But yeah, so I'm learning a lot. I'm enjoying this. I actually found this in the parenting section. So if anybody else is interested, that's the section to look in at Barnes and Noble. And then I got The Bone Chip by R.J. Barker. This is the first in the Thai Child series. This is a series I began last year and just loved and gave it to my husband and he loved it. And so we knew we were going to buy it and reread it. So this is, I purchased the first one for my collection. And then the third book that I got, I won on a Goodreads giveaway and I received it digitally. So I will put up the picture. And that is Seven Parallels. And I, all I know is it is a sci-fi book. I just, oh, you, I like Goodreads giveaways because they're free and you can get free books from them that you can then read at your, la at your leisure, at your leisure, sure, leisure. Yeah, at your leisure, leisure. That's a weird word. I'm done. Okay, <laughs> going into my book wrap up for this week. So I already briefly mentioned this started this, read the first two chapters. Going on to the books that I finished, because I think I am out of my reading slump and I was getting things done. Now it also helped that I went to some of the smaller things on my shelf as well. So I started with Those Not So Sweet Boys, Volume 2. This is where Midori is getting to know these three young men more. They're now going to school, which was what her goal in the first volume was. and she's getting to know and befriend them and they each have different personalities. So I'm really enjoying this. And then I read volume three and four of Blue Period. And this is just following Yatoro as he is preparing to apply to art school. And he's learning new skills and applying them in his life. And he's learning how he is affecting his friends and helping them understand that they can have dreams that aren't what people think of them. And I really enjoyed it. Or I'm enjoying it. It's not over, obviously. And then I finished The Secret Garden. Wasn't expecting to, but I did and loved it as always. And every time I read this, I always see different things. And one of the things that I noticed about this is we start off following Mary Lennox. And then when she meets her cousin, Colin, it's almost as if the narrator then shifts to focus on him and everything becomes about him. And Mary then becomes a side character in her own story. And I think that's kind of weird. <laughs> Cause then when they're all focusing on Colin, I'm like, yeah, but what's Mary doing? She's still growing. She's still like, how does she feel that now Colin is claiming the garden that she found and she helped bring back to life? It never goes into it. And I feel like that's actually a disservice 
in the movie ad adaptations, they balance that a little bit better. I'm going to say it's probably a product of his time. I still really love it though. And then I finished ebook, <laughs> The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. This is the first book in the Bridgerton 8 sibling series, but this is the last book that I have actually read in that series. So now I've finished the series. I mean, it's a very different experience reading it after watching that first season. And I can see how that first season, they really, they, they kept a lot of the elements that are in the book. And that was kind of cool to see. They kept way more elements in the book for the first season than they did for the second season. And I, I know I mentioned last week that reading this, I can see that this book got a lot of love and the characters were given a lot of depth. And I liked watching the relationship grow between Daphne and Simon, even after that they were married and they're still getting used to one another, how there are things that they just like. And then afterwards when they have their fights, you know, coming to understand what is actually someone mad about. Is that, that was an interesting conversation. Be like, because I know I've had conversations like that with my husband where I'm like, I'm mad, yeah, you did this, but it was really this thing over here why I needed to walk away. I still think book two is my favorite though, followed by Eloise's book. And then when for things that I finished, I finished three of the novelette nominations for The Nebulas. And the ones I finished were Colors of the Immortal Palette by Caroline Yoakum. And this is about a biracial young woman in France who just wants to be a, a painter, be an artist, but is always being regulated to be a model and isn't take, being taken seriously because she is an artist. And she ends up falling in with an immortal and then has the desire that she also wants to be immortal. And going through what that even means and coming to enter herself with her art. It was decent. It wasn't... I like the concept of immortals and how they actually work in the world. That was very interesting, especially as some of the people were calling the immortal a vampire, but this isn't a drink your blood type of immortal. So it, it was a new kind of paranormal experience for me. And then I read That Isn't the Story by John Wiswell, kind of going with the vampire theme again. And this is where a vampire's familiar decides they don't want to do it anymore and they leave. I would say there's a trigger war warning of abuse with this one because of how Anton is dealing with leaving is very similar to someone who has left an abusive situation. So that could be triggering for some people. And just going through and seeing how one person saying enough can influence others. And then I read Just Enough Rain by P.H. Lee. And this was a story about a young woman named Annette. Annette? I'm not sure how you say that. Um, Annette? Annie? This is about a young woman who goes by Annie. Who... Is just trying to live her life and her mom has a really close relationship to God and not in the like God is an actual character in this story and Annie had a conversation with her when she was 15 and freaked out and so now she feels very self-conscious around him but he still goes being friendly and trying to like be friends with her and her and her mom and him have like a weekly conversation and it's the same thing of trying to figure out where you are in the world and a mom who keeps you know saying hey you should find this find it a significant other and god interferes and then annie lets him lets him know exactly what she thinks of it and it like it was a really fun one it just it's one that's going to make you laugh a lot. So that ends what I finished. Then I continued reading short stories in Reclaim the Stars. I have finished the science fiction section and I am into the fantasy section. I read six short stories this week 
and I found two more favorites that I really enjoyed. One is Eterno by J.C. Cervantes, and this is about a creature who was born to pull dark out of the world, and the dark likes to attach itself to human souls, and so the best time to get this dark out of the world is when someone dies, because trying to pull it out of a living human being could kill them. This being has fallen in love with a human woman, and that is very taboo. And in fact, his other sibling wings aren't very happy with that. And I really enjoyed it. The other one I really liked was Leyenda by Romina Garber. Garber. Was Leyenda by Romina Garber. And her Lobesona is a book that's been on my radar for a while, but this book is set in that same, or that's not this book, this short story is set in that same world universe. I, since I haven't read her books, I don't know how closely they're related, but it really makes me now more interested to go pick up those that series sooner rather than later. And it was an interesting look at seeing a society that is set in our world but apart, because it's a magical world. Kind of think of Harry Potter. It exists in this world but is separate. And you have the males are werewolves and the females are witches, and how their society, the wolves, rule. So it's still like very much mirrors our society, but it was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed Zabet. So of those two stories, I really enjoyed. It felt like they were whole and complete. Like I said, the Garber story makes me then want to go out and read her books. Um, and another short story that wasn't a favorite, but was still really good, and I know I now want to go read, is the one by... is Whitewater Blue Ocean by Linda Raquel Nieves Perez. So definitely I'm finding new authors in this. For the other short stories, some of them, they felt more like an opening or a slice of a bigger novel. And they didn't work for me as well. Still good. Like, I, There's only been one story that I would give a three star rating to. This is a solid collection here, and I'm really enjoying it. Then I wasn't sure which of my other magical readathon prompts I wanted to dive into, so I read a chapter of this, really enjoyed it, definitely do want to continue with it, but I ultimately decided after reading the first chapter of this to go with Root Magic, and so I'm about a fourth of the way through, a fourth to a third, and I chose this one because my purpose was to read just a chapter of each to see which one I was interested in, and then all of a sudden I realized I had read the first two. So this is very easily readable, and I am greatly enjoying it. And so one of the things that it talked about was this, like, in the time of desegregation. It is, but it is not yet happening for where these children live. At the very beginning of the book, they're at their grandmother's funeral, and then two days later, they're going to school again. And this is the first time that the twins are going to be split up because Jezebel, who is the main character of the book, has been pushed ahead a grade, whereas her brother Jay is still with his age group. And so there's some conflicts that are going there. These two are really good friends, and it's great to watch the interactions between them and how they give each other advice that is real. And it's not just, oh, get away, let's try to get away with this. No, they'll be like, ah, no, we should go tell our, the grown-up in our life that this is going on. And I enjoyed seeing adults present along with them actually being active agents as well. So I'm very much enjoying this. And I plan to continue reading this this week. And this. And this. But... Today is actually the 16th of April, and this starts the Tor.com-a-thon. And so I have my three prompts, and for this I specifically chose novellas because I wanted something I could read quickly and not all of a sudden feel like I was being overwhelmed by too many books. And so the books I have for this one, which will give me a bingo on the first line, is Flowers for the Sea by Zen Rocklin, Sisters of the Vast Black by Lena Rather, 
and the watchful city by s Chioji lu i totally butchered that this is what happens when you don't look at people's pronunciations beforehand i will do better when i talk about this next week because i'm pretty sure i'm reading it this week and then it has also come to my attention that we have started or this is another round of Tome Topple, which the goal is to read a book of 500 pages or more. And for one of my buzzword prompts for the month of April is to read Little Women, which is over 500 pages. So I hope to start this sometime this week. So yeah, so that's what I finished and that is what I'm currently reading and what I'm looking to pick up next for my writing wrap up. I continued writing Cargo Ship, just working a little bit slowly, kind of finding my way. I've gone into the territory where I, I had not thought about it for months on end ahead of time. So trying to figure out what am I wanting to actually happen. And this is a fun part of drafting for me, especially since I don't have like a deadline. I can just kind of like feel out what I want. And yeah, I'm enjoying this. Then for other media, I'm no longer in a reading slump, so I'm not watching as much media. I think I've watched just some comedy things with my husband on YouTube, um, like The Tonight Show with Stephen Colbert. I know we watched John Oliver, but nothing that really sat with me. I did finish another episode of Writing Excuses, one where they were talking about footnotes and, or like foot, foot, footnotes as a structure of writing, and it made me think of some different books that I've picked up recently that have footnotes in them. And I'm someone who I don't mind footnotes, and I will read them. I find them interesting. But I know that there's some people who don't like them. And so, yeah, it was interesting to see how authors will use footnotes and how they can be used to help drive a story or create another layer to a story. And so that was a fun episode to listen to. So that was my week 15, I think. I forgot my number. Oh, well, how was your week? Have you been reading anything interesting? Have you been watching anything interesting? Are you a writer? How, how's the writing been going if you are? I would love to hear about it. Thank you and have a great day.